In 2021, I started playing golf and then six months later, I got myself an 11 handicap. I then put away my golf clubs for the winter until 2022 when I took my first ever golf lesson, got some new clubs fitted for my swing, which helped me break 80 for the first time. I also managed to shoot even par and almost break 70. So here's what I did to get my handicap down from 11 to five in the space of six months during 2022. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the tee shot. To get to single figures, you need to find a shot for you that's actually gonna hit the fairway. There's no point using a driver on a hole if it doesn't actually suit your shot shape. So if you have a look at this uh, fairway, it's a par five, but it goes slightly left. It is very wide, but if you slice it a little bit or fade, start it right and fade it, you're gonna be in the tree line. So if you're not hitting driver good that day, there's no harm in the fifth or sixth hole just thinking, you know what? Unless it's a really wide fairway, let me switch my driver out for a three wood or a three iron or seven woods rescue, whatever club goes furthest that you feel comfortable hitting a fairway with. Another little pointer that I think a lot of people, especially high handicappers, do wrong and make this mistake is actually teeing up a shot, getting over the shot without actually thinking where they want to hit the ball. And, or just sometimes you have thought about where you want the ball, but as you get over it, for whatever reason, you just think, I can't see anything happening here other than a slice. If you have negative thoughts before, before a shot, it doesn't matter if you're play, you know, playing in a competition or for fun, just get back, reset, and actually back off your shot. And then you'll be able to just feel more comfortable over this. Because at the end of the day, just hitting one or two more fairways can shave off one, two, three or four more shots because you might have lost that ball or you might make, might make another mistake from that tee shot. Oh, that's low but I should get away with it just about. So as you can see, we've got ourselves in this imaginary scenario, which will happen to every golfer, whether you're a scratch golfer, single figure mid, of course. We've got ourselves in a scenario where I can see a lot further up the fairway. Obviously it's a lot tighter. Can I pull this shot off? Yes. What are the probabilities of me hitting this shot? I don't know, it depends on your skills and how straight you hit it. For me, I'd probably say 60, 70% chance of hitting that. If I miss hit it, could go over there, could go over there, could get hit in the face with the ball. And then you've got the option over here, which I'm, I'm gonna say nothing's 100%, but 95% of the time, I'm gonna be able to get this on the fairway. The other 5% might be me under hitting it, hitting a tree, you know, a tree root. It might be hitting it too far into the rough, but basically you've got two options. Do you miss hit this 30 or 40% of the time, or do you not quite get it right and play to the easier option? So if you want to be scratched, there's absolutely no harm in walking off a hole with a bogey because you've still got the opportunity to make birdies and pars and get off with a good score. So in this scenario, if I did hit the ball here, what I'd be doing is just simply playing the ball out to the fairway. Hopefully not over hit it. It's actually gone, is that first cut? But either way, we've got a very, you know, we've advanced our ball up further and we have a chance now of actually getting up and down for a par, um, actually getting up and down for a birdie if I'm close enough to hit the green from there. The next thing is going to be actually understanding your shot shape and understanding your swing. Every, every swing is unique to you and it doesn't need to be perfect. If you're someone that actually draws the ball and there's gonna be, you know, you're starting it right and it draws in, don't try and fight it on a golf course and play a fade. Just understand your shot shape. You're gonna be able to aim for a lot uh, smaller margins if you're, if you're actually understanding your own swing. So for example, with me, I'm someone that draws the ball naturally. And for me to hit a fade, it's a lot harder than me to hit like a draw. Um, I've been working on, on the actual driving range itself, but when I come out to the golf course now, um, I have to decide, you know, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna try and shape it with the fade I've been doing on the driving range, or am I gonna just play a natural draw, which is my normal swing? So if you're caught between two swings, just play what you feel most comfortable over a shot and don't try to force it. So the flag's playing about 180, there's a ridiculous amount of wind. That's all landed behind the cameraman. I've got a six iron here. I'm tempted to go for a five iron. I guess it'll be fun for the camera anyway. I'm probably gonna lose about 15 to 20 yards here. Let's go for a, a low a low six iron. That's struck pretty well. Look how high it's gone. I'll put that back in my stance. I am all over that. I am all over that. That was a brilliant shot actually. Okay, so the next point I wanna talk about is actually up here, it's mentally. So I've just made a bogey. I didn't record that hole, but I made a bogey. You could easily lose your head in situations like this. We've got a par three, it's a very long par three. It's very easy to get inside your own head uh, and basically be a really bad caddy for yourself and say, you know what? 
I'm just gonna smash this one as hard as possible when really it's only one bogey or even if you make a double or a triple, whether you're higher or handicap, it doesn't matter. You can still make two or three pars in a row from just keeping your heads and keeping you cool. So what we've got here is a really long par three, one of the longest on the golf course. It's playing about 215 to 220 yards at the back there, it's a blue flag. Um, because it's at the back, I don't wanna pick a club that goes too far. We've got a bit of wind as we've seen already in the video. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit this five iron and I'll be happy to hit the middle of the green. That looks pretty good, it's gone so high. That is ridiculously high. I think I've just gone off the green. I think the wind up there really, I was, I was playing a draw, the wind's going from right to left, so it's actually made it look like it hooked, but not ideal. Just about. So the next thing for me to actually bring my handicap down was actually getting better with wedges in my hand. And the thing is, knowing your distance and carry distances for all your clubs is great. So for example, we've got a 58 here, probably goes about 85 to 90, depending on the lie, conditions, summer, winter, that kind of thing. Then we've got this uh, 54, which goes 105. I need to hit this shot about 80 to 85 yards. Um, I've just hit a great drive, and I think a lot of mid handicappers do this. They have the distance off the tee, they get you know, really close, but they don't know how to actually take distance off their clubs. So you really need to get good within, I'd say, 40 to 80 yards or 40 to 100 yards, whatever that distance may be. There's many ways of doing that. It could be just a feel of where you bring your club back to. So for example, one could be rib cage, where your hands are, your rib cage, or low, low rib cage. Another one could be like chest height, then it could be shoulder height then it could be like a three quarter swing, then it could be a full swing. So something like that, just having different areas or different feels before you take a shot will help you actually get dialed and leave the ball in situations where you can walk off of a birdie rather than hitting over the back and walking off of a bogey. I could hit a full 58 here, but I'm a little bit afraid of the lie. So this might actually go a little bit too far. I think for me, I'd rather use this 54 and do kind of like a, just a three quarter, maybe even a half swing because it's a, a green that goes up quite a lot. So I'd rather be under the hole. So that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, let's see if we can get it close to the flag. That needs to go a little bit more because it's a green that's uh, uphill. It just basically stops straight away. Should have taken that into consideration a bit more, but we're on the green, we've got an uphill putt, good chance to walk off with, uh, with a birdie or a putt. Go, 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 go. Oh, so close to a birdie. Oh man, close, but what can you do? I'd love to make more golf videos just like this, but with higher production. At the moment, I'm using an iPhone to record the videos and I'm editing them by myself. And occasionally I'm waiting for friends to help me out record and hold the camera. If you could do me a favor by subscribing to the channel and liking the video, hopefully with enough views, I can actually make this a full-time thing. So obviously to get down to single figure handicap, you need to be practicing at the driving range quite a lot. You need to be doing some chipping, some putting, but that doesn't always translate over to the actual golf course itself. I'd say putting does, chipping, you know, it's quite tough because you're gonna get different lies. So when you do practice chipping, practice tough lies as well, not just on firm lies. But something I wanna talk about is actually tee shots or, you know, situations like this. The tee box is making you go one way, but you might not want to start it dead straight. You might want to fade it over the, you know, the bunker on the left. If you're a drawer, you might want to start it down this tree line and let it draw in. If you're at the practice range and you're hitting flush shot after flush shot, it feels really good. And you come out to the golf course and it's just not translating very well. What you should do is get the things that you would use at the driving range and just come out here and use them for practice. As long as you're not in a competition, I'm not actually sure if it's in the rules or not. So let's say I actually want to practice, you know, fading the ball in like I would at the range. Why not put a stick down and actually use it to get a feel for what that is? Because I might have set up without this stick thinking, okay, I want to fade here and I've set up like that. I'm actually facing kind of middle of the fairway or right of the fairway. I hit a shot, it fades, it goes into the trees. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna think I played a bad shot, but really it's just the alignment. So you need to practice things like this actually on the golf course. So in summary, practice makes perfect, but in golf, you really need to get out onto the golf course and put it into practice. There you go, little fade. It's a bit thick, but it is summer, so it should run out a little bit more. Right side of the fairway. Keep going, keep going, keep going. 
So to get your handicap down to the low single figures, you really need to be able to play different types of chip shots. You know, you need to be able to play a high one, a low one. Um, I, I truly believe if you get to like an eight or nine handicap, you can do it with like little bump and runs, little chip shots. But in a situation like this, this is just very daunting. If you just play your standard chip shot, there's a good chance you might overhit it and it runs down the other side. It's like a, like a 30 foot drop off the other side of the green. If you don't hit it hard enough, you're in this bunker. So you could lose another, you know, a couple of shots by not being able to play the right chip shot. As we already spoke about with practice, it's all good practicing around the chipping greens. But when you come out to the golf course, you've only got one chance to do it. You know, you can't do 20 balls in a row and then take the best one. You need to be able to pull this off um, straight away. This is a shot I've been practicing. We're gonna try and pull it off. If I can get up and down here, this will be a great situation. That's quite nice, that should run out. It actually hit the bank, uh, got a bit of a power boost there. Pin high, but I actually aimed a little bit too far right, but hopefully we can get up and down and walk off of a par. So to get into single figure handicaps, you need to be able to putt really well and feel confidence in this situation like this. So we've just played our chip shot. We need to get up and down. So this putt needs to go in for that. The worst case scenario is we're gonna get a bogey because I'm gonna two putt this. I know my pace, I've done my practice putts before we've gone out on this round, so I know the pace of the greens. But for a single figure handicap, reading this and thinking you know how much is this going to break i should feel confident getting this up and down and that's really going to keep the score slow as i said worst case scenario should be a bogey so let's see if we can put this in and walk off with a par break left oh i just went past the hole so there you go we made a bogey but that's what golf's like we managed to get ourselves into a good position to make up for a par that's minus one on the scorecard but you know, as a single figure, you're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to make bogeys. Just mo don't let them fall into double bogey. So to get down to single figures, you need to have a lot of experience actually on the golf course. It's very easy to get caught up practicing on the, the fake grass and the driving range on simulators. But when you come out to the golf course, you're gonna get lies that you just can't practice for in, in those, those situations. So I've actually got two different lies here. So if we actually had a drive, we've got two balls. So we've got one lie here, which is what we'd call a flyer lie. And we've got another lie where there's no grass growing. Well, there is some, a little bit of grass, but this should come out the exact distance that I know my clubs should be hit. Whereas the first one, which is a flyer lie, it could easily catch another 10, 15 yards in, you know, if it's a long line, it could catch another 20, 25 yards. I've had my eight iron go 200 yards before because I've hit it as hard as I possibly could and I've gained another 30 yards. So what I'll do now is I'll hit both of these shots with two different clubs. I'm gonna try to do the, exactly the same swing. Obviously there's gonna be a little bit of a difference. I'm, I'm not a pro or anything, but we're gonna see where the balls come out and see what the distance actually is. Um, sometimes you can identify a flyer light and it just doesn't actually fly on you but it's, uh, it's obviously very important that you have the good course knowledge and experience out here to actually know what could possibly happen. So we'll go, we'll go nine iron first because it's in the way. Seems to be dropping quite quick. That's quite low spin. Might have just gone off the back or just the edge of the green. So that's gone about 155-ish. Uh, it might have caught a little bit of a fly because, because of the way it is, but not as much as this one will. So that was the nine iron. This is the pitching wedge. Let's see if this, this one actually flies. I could just feel straight through the ball. It's just zipped out. It's a good distance though. That's probably about five yards short of the distance that the nine iron got. I've gained another 10 yards just because of the way the ball actually lied on the floor. So the next thing we've spoken about knowing your swing, whether you're a drawer, you're a fader, most people can't really hit it straight. You're either one or the two, right? We've got ourselves in a sticky situation here. We're a little bit short-sided. So we're going to talk about short-siding and when you can actually get the green light to attack a flag. So if you are naturally a drawer of the ball, if you have a look at the flag here, it's, um, it's at the back, but it's slightly to the left side of the green. So you could have started over here with a draw. But what I've done, I've gone a little bit too close and I've missed. So I've drawn it over and I've left myself short over here. So this is something that you wanna to try to cut out as much as possible. Be a little bit uh, more conservative with your approach play. Start aiming for the middle of the green a little bit more. And as I said with the other tip, know your shot shape. So if you do miss it, you miss it and you're, only, you're still on the green as opposed to actually being short-sided because you're not a professional. You're not trying to you know, go under par. To get a single figure handicap, you just need to make a lot of pars and tr try to keep your bogeys to just bogeys and not double bogeys. Not the best chip there, but you can see because of the lie, I was very tentative to be too aggressive. You know, with, with, in that rough, you don't know what you're going to get. It's going to be a little bit of a lottery. 